Hi there, Simon Morse here again to talk you through how I create an illustration for one of my children's books. In the first video of this three video series you saw me sketch the page, design it and create some sketches to make up the page. In the second one you saw me uh, use those sketches to create some nice chunky thick black line art which you'll see uh, in a few moments that I start to paint underneath. And in this third video you'll see how I digitally paint underneath that uh, in a program called Coral Painter. Now I've got a very boring voice, uh, I'm more than aware of that, so I've sped up this uh, process uh, so that you can see it all in a short period of time by about 20 by about 20 times. So this is actually about 20 times the speed that I actually uh, do it in and I've only shown you part of the process so you can just get a taste uh, uh, of how it's done. So don't think we're actually painting this quickly, uh, although it would be wonderful if I could. So here you can see in the program Coral Painter, I've got that line art that we created in the last video on the top layer. Here and in the background, uh, I'm just blocking in quickly uh, some sort of night sky colours because uh, Jimmy is now in space, Rocket Kid's in space, and there's, and there's space behind him, obviously. Now, using a digital program, I can uh, block in that background really quickly and roughly. And then to give it sort of that smooth sort of um, flow between colours, I can use like a big blurring brush just to sort of smudge things together. And I can adjust the colours a little bit and tweak them a little bit until I'm happy with them. So you can see those sort of colour changes happen quite quickly. Then now I've dropped in some stars very quickly there in a separate layer uh, using like a random splatter brush which is a really quick nice way of doing that without making them look too sort of formulaic. And then I move on to paint the other different features in the scene. Now at this point you'll see that I'm literally just colouring in the different features. I, I'm not uh, sort of um, shading or taking much care. I'm literally just picking a colour from the top right on that colour wheel and then I'm colouring in the section. So this is a bit like a glorified digital colouring in book at the moment. It's just a process of me uh, selecting the different colours, moving around the page uh, and colouring in things. I love this sort of uh, orange and blue together. I've always been a big fan of that. So that's why I've done my cactus looking sort of this odd blue colour. Plus they're alien cactuses or cacti. So I can get away with that. Um, and uh, again, as you can see, just colouring in the different sections a bit like a colouring in book. Now when I finish that for the background elements, I'll do the same for Jimmy, the rocket kid in the foreground. Same process again, just colouring in, selecting my colours, moving through the different elements and colouring in the different sections uh, on his body, body with the colour that I've chosen. So again, super fast, super straightforward. Uh, and then once I've done that, I'll create another layer. Now this layer, I turn the opacity down quite a lot and I set to a, a mode called multiply. Uh, and then in this layer, I paint a lot uh, the colours a lot more faintly and this is because this is the shadow which starts to give things a little bit of shape and sort of gives a bit of volume and form to all the different sort of parts of the illustration. Now this is done mainly with just a, a dark blue colour just sort of to make it look a little bit like there's a bit of form to things so I'm mainly picking out the underside of things, places where the light won't get to the, uh, to the elements uh, quite as much. And this is sort of safe for areas where it's the underside of things or areas where there's sort of a pinch in the skin. And you can see how it starts to sort of give a bit of form and a bit of shape to those different things uh, in the scene. And I'll go about doing this to absolutely everything on the page that I can see. Once I've done that, uh, I then uh, go and I'll select uh, uh, another layer, create another new layer. And this time I'll set it to exactly the same opacity. I'll multiply again, but I'll choose different colours, brighter colours this time which I'll then go around my shadow with just to sort of add a bit of colour and a bit of tint of colour to the different shadows in the scene and uh, just to make them look that little bit more believable, a little bit more like they've got a bit of shape to them and again I'll do this to absolutely everything in, my, in the scene, applying it in very much so the same way just using a little bit of colour to the shadows, adding a bit of colours to the shadows just to make it look that little bit more believable really uh, and this can be done quite quickly, quite straightforward once I've done that, I then move into sort of my darkest shadow layer. So in this layer, I've I've done a multiply uh, layer mode again, and uh, but this time I've I've not made it quite as uh, I've kept the opacity a bit higher basically, and I use a dark blue again, and this is really sort of the darker areas of shadow. And again, I will focus my attention to start with on the main character in the foreground, but again, this will be done to all the different parts and different elements in the background as well, uh, nice and quick uh, and quite straightforward really. Then once I've done that, I will uh, focus on the highlights. So I go around the scene now, uh, picking out all those areas of highlights, all those different areas 
where the light uh, from sort of the environment might catch the edge of things. And this is a bit of a cheat in the way that I do this uh, because it's not really reflecting what happens in reality because light doesn't just go around the edge of things. But by doing the edge of things particularly and adding highlight there, it helps to sort of separate the uh, character from the background and separate different elements from the dark and the shadow bits, uh, sort of creating more of a contrast and making the picture just that little bit more interesting to have a look at. So then once I've done that, I will uh, move on to adding some textures. So this is done simply by dropping some photographs in the page, rubbing them out, adjusting them a little bit, uh, and I'll do this over quite a few different elements of the, of the scene, and you'll see that on a, on a few different places when you look at the picture at the end of the process. But you can see I've just sort of added a bit of a pattern to his pyjamas there, and I'll tweak that a little bit so you can't see it quite as much, just so it gives a bit of texture to what he's wearing. Now once I've done that, I'm going to add some sort of uh, lighting effect. So he's got sort of that glass in front of him, that uh, sort of astronaut looking through his satellite window. And those sort of fin-like wings on the side of his satellite are, uh, are very shiny. So I've added sort of a bit of a reflection to those to make them look a bit more believable. Then at this point, I'm making these look like glowing lights on his satellite. Now this is quite tricky actually. And you can see that I've had sort of a couple of goes at this, a bit of trial and error and playing. Because sometimes different processes work a bit better depending on what the colours are in the background and what you're painting over. So I play with this a few times, but the important thing is to make it look like it's reflecting on those elements around the scene, otherwise it just won't be believable and look like those lights are actually in the scene. And it just uh, sort of uh, links everything together really and makes it look like it's part of an actual scene. Then in this next section I start to sort of plot the course of the smoke trail that's going to be coming through the background. And you'll actually see me do this over a few layers and this is to sort of add the impression of depth as uh, as Rocket Kids got nearer to the viewer. So you see I'll rub, rub out that bit there. And this is sort of the furthest in the background smoke that you can see at the, at the moment. Then I create another new layer which is not quite as transparent as the layer below that. Just to make it look like that smoke's coming nearer to the viewer, um, nearer to you as, uh, as you're looking at the page. And you can see that sort of adds the impression of depth as it goes into the background and hopefully that effect uh, has been quite effective and sort of works and you'll see that I also add some sort of smoke underneath him in a minute to make it look like he's kicking up some dust underneath him as he comes into land so you see that there underneath his rocket there and then I just add a few glows out of the back of his rocket pack to make it look like there's sort of fire coming out of there and there you can see the finished image I've added some shooting stars in the background I've kind of tweaked the colors a little bit to make them look a bit more bluey as if they're in space but you can see there the finished image ready for text to be added. Now this is quite a different process perhaps to uh, what you're used to seeing. So if you've got any questions about this, uh, add some questions in the comments below and I'll do my best to respond to them and to give you some feedback and maybe some help if this is a, a process that you're interested in having a go at yourself. And, uh, and hopefully you'll be able to come up with something better than I have or uh, uh, that you like as well. So if you're uh, interested in my stories, pop onto Amazon and have a look and search The Adventures of Rocket Kid. Uh, and uh, take a look at my book and see what you think. I'm working on the second book in the series now, uh, and hopefully you'll like that one as well, uh, if you enjoyed the first one. Uh, but as I say, if you've got any questions, uh, don't hesitate to get in touch and add a comment. And I hope you found these uh, videos interesting and useful. So thanks again for your time. Thanks. Bye.